Arab, like 6,000 concubines, and guess where most of them came from? They came from the middle, uh, from uh, the Mediterranean, from the north of France. Yes. And this is by his parents, you know, by uh, Irene. Irene, you alright? Right? Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I would like to talk about Taweed since Ali Dawa has just run away from the debate. Okay, you want to talk about Tawheed? I'd like to talk about Tawheed. Last time you had a debate with, uh, with me with regards to... I've debated the Trinity I, with I, you twice. No, I think it was... The Incarnation was twice, yeah, with right. you. He's got better uh, memory. The Incarnation so, with you. As long as... as crucifixion As, as long as we, we... We we get... I get to go speak about a topic and you get to speak about a topic. Yeah. I'd like to debate Tawheed first and then afterwards we can debate another topic. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So a topic on Islam and a topic on Christianity. Tawhid, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We need a timer. Is there anyone willing to time? No one is coming forward. I'm just thinking, Hashim, no, do you want to go to a, a corner okay. rail? So I want to keep this with keep 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 less interruption. Gonna move over to a rail. Uh, Hashim yeah, is braver rail. than Ali Dawa. Let's go to a rail. Yeah, let's go to the rail. Maybe Ali Dawa has different reasons. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, wait. Lovely day today, yeah? Hope you all are enjoying. Bob, very good, very good. It's been a while Sweet since we have a lovely day on a Sunday. No red herrings. Could someone, could someone pull up a timer for us? See Allah on the last day. Okay, so Bob's going to start with a topic of his, and then I will select a topic, and then we can go from there. No, no. Yeah, we do actually. <laughs> we really do. So the class. Let me ask. Let me ask Bob. Thank you, sir. Thank you, officer. God bless. Let me ask Bob. What? Do you know that it is a particular company to do the intersection? No, 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 don't worry about that, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, we're running out. So who's timing it? Greg, you? Who's timing it? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. No, we'll, we'll I'll watch it, I'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> as a uh, paper boy being uh, blacklisted. Bob, are you starting? Yeah, I can start if you want. Go on, start, Bob. Okay. okay. Are we start? Ready? Go. Okay. Uh, start again. Let's start. Let's start when we're ready. Yeah. Okay. Two minutes. Two minutes. Go. Ready? Yeah. Go. So the reason why I wanted to have this debate is partly because we know that Muslims like to debate the Trinity, and they like to interrogate the Trinity. In that context, it is only fair that Christians should interrogate the central doctrine of Islam. The central doctrine of Islam is the idea that Allah is one, that Allah is without division, that nothing is comparable to him, that there is a great barrier, as it were, between Allah up there and the creation, and that this barrier is not crossed, not something that is broken, that Allah is unique, different, Now, by his creation, I can't see the time. When we see Islamic texts translated into English, we find 
say exactly. Is it counting up or down? It is the hope of some Muslims that in paradise they will see Allah. So my question is clear. Is direction a created thing? Is vision, as beholden by the created, a created thing? And do they see Allah with this vision? I believe is a if you remember that when you stand by the that beings have human created beings like even the animals with which they can see. So this is this is and allows you to what is that got with nothing into your organ with people mean which we don't know about okay it's about a realm that we don't know about it's about the afterlife there are many things which will happen in the afterlife the Quran gives you a glimpse of it however that is not exactly what is going to happen in the afterlife so because it doesn't explain the details so I really don't understand your point Bo. do not try to equate it to the Trinity where God became human okay that is literally God changing his nature from divine to human is that all? Yeah. Okay. So my question was very simple. And I noticed that Hashim didn't actually answer it. What he did do though was make some silly ad hominem about some argument that I had where, where Shamsi also didn't answer the same question. The question was, when it says in the Quran that on the last day the believers will see Allah, that they will look towards their Lord is what the Quran says. Well, direction is a created thing. Dimensional space is a created thing. And the ability to see anything is a created thing. That means only one of two possibilities. Either when the Quran says that they will look towards their Lord, that Allah has entered into vision and thus has entered into creation or the Quran has lied because the Quran has said something that is not true that they don't in actual fact see Allah but they see some kind of mirage of Allah some kind of representation or icon the problem is left unsolved and simply saying oh you you, I don't understand your point isn't addressing the question. I think most people around where I'm standing can understand the point that I'm making. Muslims argue that Allah never enters creation. Fair enough. If that is true, your texts should agree with you. Your texts should support you, but your texts contradict you. No, actually it doesn't, Bob. And by the way, complaining about ad hominems. I just said, Shamsi had this discussion with you, okay? Uh, anyway, it was embarrassing, yeah? If you consider that as ad hominem, that's up to you. So, your problem is with the direction. Okay, where in the Quran does it say, look towards Allah? 
Why does he say that? You did not quote the ayah. You did not quote the exact phrase that is used in the in the Quran. So where does he say towards Allah or towards this east or south or north? Yes? It doesn't specify the direction in the Quran. Yes? The vision is something that we will see. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt about that. But only the people in Jannah. Only they will have this pleasure and this will be better than any pleasure that they have in Jannah. So regardless of whatever reward that has been given to them, yes, this vision of Allah will be the best thing that, will that, that they will actually perceive as the best thing that happened to them. So it is not like Jesus, like a God who was never a human being, yes, became a man. So this is a change in nature. So if you read Malachi 3.6 in the Bible, yes, I know I'm bringing up the Bible when you're discussing the Quran, but just show, to show you the parallel, what Bob here is trying to do is like, he's trying to drag us to the level of their belief in which the God becomes a human being and then dies at the hands of human beings. And that is unlike Allah, because Allah says unlike anything, anything that you can perceive, anything that you can imagine, anything that you can see or you, can, you heard of, yes, because it's beyond all that. Allah says, this one statement in the Quran is enough to actually tell you that anyone who says or tries to parallel anything with the created thing is not, you're not talking about Allah, you're talking about something else. So when Bob says this is going to happen in, in, in the Akhirah, that they're going to see, we don't know. Allah doesn't explain how, what form, okay, what, how it is going to be. There's no explicit details there. Okay. Now, for those of you that are new to this discussion, I want you to bear in mind that Hashim has agreed that the discussion is about Islamic beliefs, not Christian beliefs. And the fact that he wants to get off Islamic beliefs and try to turn this into a debate about Christian beliefs demonstrates the embarrassment. This is the verse that I'm talking about. It's in the Quran, Surah 20, uh, Surah Qiyamah. Surah 20 is Taha. I can't pronounce it in Arabic. Kiyama. It's 22. 22, 23. Fair enough. Numbers problems. Yeah, fair enough. 22, Surah 22, Ayah 23. It reads this. Some faces that day shall be Nadira, is how the translation puts it. It means shining and radiant. Now, let me ask you this question. Are the some, that's the people, created? Yes. Are the faces that they have created? Yes. Is the day that it's talking about created? Yes. Is the effect on their face created? Yes. Looking at their Lord, it goes on to say. Is looking a created act? Is vision a created thing? Yes, it is. Is paradise a created thing? Yes, it is which means that every single aspect of this verse is a created thing. It says at their Lord. At is the same as saying in English toward. If you look at something, look at the tree, look at Hashim, look at the camera, look at the brother here, look at my hairstyle. It's all directional. That's what the verse is saying. Direction is created. Sorry. What, what verse is it? 22? 23. 22, 23. Okay, 22, 23 reads as such. Yeah, Indeed, is. Allah will admit those no, who no. believe. This is, the, this is the reference. You've got it right here. It says 22, 23. Al Qiyama. That's the name of the surah. Oh, I see. Okay. Hold on, Hashim. Let me start the timer. Well, let, right. let me find the reference. It's always important to get the... It's fair enough. Yep. The iron. You got a drink? Yeah. It's 75. It's 23, is it? Uh, uh, it is. Al Al Kima 22-23. Okay. Okay. So it says here. Are you ready to go? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for holding. Um, so Surah Al Kiyama, chapter 75, verse 23-24. Yeah. It says here, 
ila rabbihi nadira okay now towards the lord, lord they look yes in the arabic in in so it doesn't tell you exactly the direction what is that going to do with creation so for example if i'm looking at the moon or i'm looking at you guys here yes have you entered into my vision because his earlier statement was something to do with vision the vision is created yes that is my organ that allows me to see things but how does the things that i'm seeing coming into my vision i don't understand that point that bob is trying to make here okay the reason i brought in the bible is because that is exactly what they want to indirectly say look you guys are believing the same thing so that's why we are bringing these verses yes clutching at straws literally here yes that allah enters the creation allah doesn't enter the creation okay and we know that they are unable to find anything in the quran so here they're finding it that in on the day of qiyamah in jannah the muslims will see allah yes there's no doubt about it we'll see allah how we don't know it doesn't say how yes so anyone saying that this is how is going to happen or is entering into the creation it doesn't say he's going to enter into jannah does it in the quran it doesn't say that so what you're saying is based on speculation or your assumptions about the yawm al qiyamah we have no knowledge of the unseen the afterlife we have been given glimpses about the glimpses of this but we haven't given detail have been given details about it so anyone who says that or tries to imply that Allah enters a creation, they have to provide solid proof, not speculations like Bob here is trying to do. Bring solid proof, bring something explicit from the Quran. Yes? Now you can't do that, just like you can't do it for the Trinity, Bob. Yes, you failed miserably the last time, the last three debates we had. So I don't, I don't um, really, uh, sorry, I'm not really surprised that you are trying now to use that same indirect approach of finding things in the Quran which is not explicit. Okay. You got 19 minutes still? Yeah. No, it's going to be actually you. Okay, that's okay. Carry on. Okay, right. So, notice again the distraction, the red herring. This is not a debate about Christian beliefs. This is a debate about Islamic beliefs. Islamic beliefs are that Allah doesn't enter into his creation, but the texts contradict them. He said that the Quran doesn't say how. Yes, it does. It says looking. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you look? What is looking? Looking is an act of vision. He said, he, he brought up some red herring about three debates we had about the Trinity. Actually, Hashim, we had two. You lost them both. And everyone can watch them on Soko films. Soko's at three. So, so you're wrong. <laughs> so, don't interrupt, Hashim. Control yourself. However, he said that you've got to bring firm evidence. So let's bring for more evidence. The evidence. The evidence of his own hadiths. I recite the hadith Abu Hurairi reported Allah's messenger as saying, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven. Muslims, is the lowest heaven a created thing? Does Allah descend into the lowest heaven? According to the hadiths, he does. Now ask me, if he descends into the lowest heaven, how is that not entering into creation? And it gets worse, because he says he goes there to listen to the night prayers. Well, that predicates a flat earth, not a round one. Because if the earth is flat, Allah descends and rises according to the rising and the setting of the sun. But if the earth is round and rotates, he descends and he never rises because it's always evening somewhere. The hadiths demonstrate the fallacy of Islamic belief. Okay, so now again, more speculations. Now he's taking things literally. Okay, so when he says Allah descends, he thinks it's literally descending. We don't know how Allah's descend is. Has anyone seen Allah ascending or descending? No, we haven't. It is from the knowledge of the unseen. If you want to take it literally, then you have to have a really a good explanation as to why when Allah says in the Quran that is closer to us than our Jagila Wayne. So where is he? Allah is near here? Now, if you want to take everything literally and not and decontextualize it, that's up to you. Maybe that's how you read your Bible. Unfortunately for you, that is not how the Muslims read the Hadith or the Quran or the books of the Sira or any other Islamic literature. How Allah descends on the night, we don't know. Okay? His movement, whether it is in any direction, 
whether it is on the um, uh, on a, during the night or during the day we don't know okay we don't know how Allah operates if you do know and if you have any explicit proof authentic proof then please bring forth so far it's only speculation based on your reading of the hadith that you have actually summarized or you have come to the conclusion that this is how Allah comes down I'll give you a better words I give you a better words that Allah is closer to you than your Jagilah Wayne yes you can't get more closer than that to a human being that is the closest now if you want to take that and interpret it as this is how Allah prays then you got a big problem because if you take everything literally even from the Bible you'll have a you'll have a huge problem now we don't know what happened or sorry how Allah uh, basically uh, how in the hereafter we are going to see things how we see Allah how Allah operates how the angels operate even today we don't know this forget about during the afterlife these are the things from the metaphysical from the unknown yes and this is clear that when Allah says that he's unlike any create, created thing like anything then you cannot even comprehend that and that is clear basically okay Ready? Oh, sorry, can we start? I didn't realize you pressed. Can we start again? So, um, Hashim's defense was we don't know. We don't know how we see Allah. We don't know how Allah descends. What a great revelation that is. We don't know. Allah's entire theology, this great revelation that was meant to be clear guidance to the whole of mankind, is reduced to this phrase we don't know. Shrug. I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. They're essentially saying that they don't know anything about God because language loses its meaning. Looking doesn't mean looking. Descending doesn't mean descending. Direction doesn't mean direction. In other words, they, Islamic theology makes a mockery of the idea of language as a form of communication. And then when the Quran says something, that uses language that is about shape or vision or descending or shins or hands or eyes or any of these things or a throne then we don't know but unfortunately according to Muhammad we do listen to this then Allah will come to them this is the Muslims on the day of judgment will come to them and say I am your Lord they will reply they will stay here they will reply we'll stay here till our Lord comes to us and when he comes to us we will recognize him then Allah will appear in such a shape everyone say shape that they can recognize him now answer me this are dimensional shapes a creation of Allah Hashim okay so now he's brought up another hadith okay again clutching at straws I think I've, I've uh, dealt with this hadith with paper boy over here and he brought up the same thing so I'll, I'll, I'll have, I have the same answer to Bob as well so yes Allah does we will see Allah so he has a form yes this is clear Allah has a surah we know that but what kind how in what shape do you know the surah of an angel according to the Bible the angel and God are spirits do spirits have forms but people saw angels yes people saw angels who are spiritual now how would you explain that to a person who has never seen an angel before yes now how Allah is going to appear to us on the day of judgment we don't know yes like I said many things in the hadith have been explained this is like a glimpse for you so Allah says we'll have certain sorry the Prophet said you will have certain things in the paradise and there'll be so and so uh, uh, things in the, in the hellfire yes these are glimpses we cannot fathom them yes however we can get an idea on the day of judgment Allah will appear to people in a certain form in one way in one uh, when he appears to them they would have recognized him when he appears to them the second time they will not recognize him it is like me saying Bob when he appears to me from the backside from and I'm far away I might not recognize him but when he comes to me clear face to face then I recognize that will be Bob here that doesn't mean the previous person that I saw wasn't Bob even though I did not recognize him it's simple you talk about language remember the language when Mansur tried to use with you with regards to the Trinity and he used the term entity you said do not use the term entity yet they will use the term people that there are three persons the term person is not in the Bible yet they'll use that same terminology extra biblical terminology to define the Trinity so don't teach me about language being inadequate is inadequate in the Bible that's the reason you have to use extra biblical terminology like persons within the Trinity 
Okay, so there you go. Use your time at Hashim, use your so time. So what we have established is this. Allah Mahashim, not Allah, Hashim has no answer no, to the not. idea that you will see Allah on the day of creation. No idea. He hasn't even addressed the fact that it says in the Quran that you will see Allah. He just says, we don't know how. He has no idea how Allah will descend into the lowest heaven to hear the night prayers of the faithful. Despite the fact that, that even the Dawa team are embarrassed, they're walking away. No, they're not. So in terms of, in <laughs> terms of, in terms, <laughs> calm down Hashim, don't interrupt my time. The fact of the matter <laughs> is, <laughs> Hashim <laughs> hasn't addressed the fact that the barrier between creation and Allah is broken. Allah has a shape, Allah he's seen, Allah descends. He hasn't addressed any of those points, he just does this big shrug and say, we don't know how. Not knowing how is not the same as saying it doesn't happen. Not knowing how isn't the same as saying that it doesn't happen. The fact of the matter is, the text of the Islamic doctrine, the text of the Muslims, breaks the barrier that people like Hashim and people like Shamsi want to uphold when they attack the Incarnation. The reality is their texts contradict them, their God is entering into creation. Hashim, I would like to ask you, the Quran says that Allah is in heaven. That's what the Quran says. I want to ask you, is Allah in heaven or not? Then when you answer that, I want you to answer me this. Is heaven a created thing? Okay, so now Bob here made a few strawman arguments, yes? That if it, if it happens, sorry, if you see it, that means it doesn't happen or you don't know how it happens. Of course, I never said you don't see Allah. I've said this several times, that you will see Allah, yes? And I said he has a surah, he has a form. I did not deny that. This is clearly, I, I mean, you're, you're using strawman arguments to, to somehow justify yourself. Now you said Allah is in the heaven. Where in the Quran does it say he's in the heaven? Yes? Allah says he, has, uh, he ascends over the, train, over the throne. It doesn't say he's in the heaven. And the, and the throne is above the heavens, if you, read the, if you read the hadith. So Bob, make sure you substantiate what you say before you make claims like Allah is in the heaven. Where in the Quran or in the hadith does it say Allah is in the heaven? Now, if you do not have the evidence, if you do not have proof, please do not speculate about Allah. Do not speculate about the deen if you do not have. And if you do have the proof, please provide it. But right now, you made a claim without any substantiation, without any justification. Now, this is something which is unfair. If you do it, do it fairly, like at least show us some proof. If you don't have proof, then tough. So he brought he brought in the he brought in the panel with incarnation. Remember what he said earlier? Do not talk about things other than what we are discussing, the Quran. Why did you bring in the incarnation then, Bob? Because we knew all along that is a panel you're trying to create here. Unfortunately, it won't work for you, Bob. Doesn't matter how much you try, how hard you try, how loud you speak, or whatever uh, uh, I don't know, sophistry you use, it will not work. Allah is unlike his creation. Alhamdulillah, in the Quran, we have clear cut. In the hadith, we have clear cut about what the Prophet ﷺ told us about the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, for two minutes he spoke and all he essentially said was, um, Bob, you've not brought the proof. Well, here it is. Surah 67, Ayah 16. Do you feel secure that he who is in heaven would not cause the earth to swallow you? That's what the Quran says. The Quran says that Allah is in heaven. If he is in heaven, then he is in creation. If he is in heaven, he is in his creation. It also says that he descends into the lowest heaven in the hadiths. The hadith says that Allah descends into the lowest heaven. So you've got high heavens and you've got lower heavens and you've got a lowest heavens and Allah descends from above creation, above his throne, he descends above the highest heaven, he descends through the medium heavens and then he gets to the lowest heaven to listen in to the prayers of the Muslims. That's what the hadith says. 
The Hadith say and the Quran say that Allah has a shape. A shape. We'll go into what that shape is. The Quran describes it. It's a shin with eyes and two right hands. That's what the Quran describes as Allah. Now, I want to ask Hashim and every Muslim who's listening. Are Allah's hands the same as Allah's shin? I want you to answer that question, Hashim, on your turn. Are Allah's hands the same as Allah's shin? Because the Quran says he's got hands and the Quran says he's got a shin. So answer me, are they the same? The Quran says Allah is heaven, in heaven. Those are the words that are in the Quran. That means that Allah is in his creation. So all of this Islamic doctrine is broken down by their own texts. Okay. Which ayah was that, by the way? There was 67, 16. 67, 16, yeah? 67, 16. Right, let's read that. Surat al-Mulk, 67, verse number 16. Do you feel secure that he who holds authority in the heavens Wait a minute, I know it's in the bracket, you have lots of things in the bracket in the Bible. Do you feel secure that he who holds authority in the heavens would not cause in the earth to swallow you and suddenly it would sway? So again, decontextualizing by, by, by clearly not looking at the tafsir, not looking at the, uh, the evidences that are given to us from the ulama. Because remember, just like you have your church fathers and you have your explanations, Yes, we have the ulama, the scholars who interpret the verses of the Quran and the Hadith. Yes, this is something that is in the Islamic theology which you cannot dispute because this is clearly a case that we cannot interpret everything. I know he brings up this verse saying, oh, everything in the Quran is clear. Yes, with regards to Tawheed, with regards to oneness. Remember this topic was about Tawheed. What does Tawheed mean? The oneness of Allah. All Bob here is discussing is how he can incarnate into his creation because that is the only way he can explain to us his theology. How does his God become from Almighty to someone who's, who's basically so weak that he cannot even answer his own prayers. That he has to beg God for glory. And that he has to ask, uh, basically pray to God to save him from the cross and so on. So, what, with regards to the limbs and the hands, again, when you talk about the hands of the clock, do you understand the limbs of the clock? No. Allah is unlike his creation. Just like the clock is not a human being and it uses the term hands over there, Allah uses the term hand and shins, but these are not limbs of Allah. These are not something that, that literally is the way you define it as limbs. We, no one says this. We don't know what, when, when Allah says certain things, it is basically like a set of glimpse of what Allah can do. That he's created Adam, he's created man with his hand. So, notice that Hashim didn't answer my question. My question was very clear. Are the hands of Allah the same as the shin of Allah or are they distinct? And the reason why Hashim didn't answer the question is because he knows whichever way he answers the question, he has a problem. If he says that the shins of Allah and the hands of Allah are distinct and not the same, then that means that Allah's unity is composite. It is of parts. It is of things amalgamated together. If he says that they are the same, then it means that the shin and the hand distinction becomes meaningless communication. Now, I find it funny that Hashim wants to adopt a position of metaphor and a position of literalism uh, almost as an arbitrary standard and I don't blame him he's a well executed debater but his sophistry his ability to debate does not excuse Islamic sources from incoherence the text says that Allah is in heaven that is what the text says the bit about the authority is a bit in brackets. In other words, the scholar puts that into the translation. It's not there in the Arabic. So the Quran is saying that Allah is in heaven. The Hadiths also say that Allah rises above his throne. Now, if you rise above your throne, you're starting from a position beneath it. This is movement. 
You can't rise above something that is already below you. And the throne is a created thing. So, sorry. Okay. So again, we are going into literals here. If that's what, how you want to interpret the Bible, then that's up to you. I mean, God died on the cross. Is that literally right? right? Yes. I think that'll be the next topic we should discuss more. So yeah, I've already answered this question. He asked me, are the limbs, sorry, are the, are the hands the same as the, as, as the shin? Now the reason he's asking that question is because in his imagination, and which is clearly the case from his question, he's imagining them as limbs. Are they the same? Now we don't know what Allah looks like, what Allah is. We will see him on the, uh, on, on the day of Qiyamah, uh, sorry, uh, during uh, Jan in Jannah, we'll see him. However, when you see someone, we don't know what kind of body we'll have that day. Yes, let alone the eyes. We'll be given heavenly bodies. He knows that. Yes, spiritual bodies when Jesus died and so on, they know that as well, they believe the same thing. So why don't you understand that we cannot fathom things about afterlife, Bob? You need to understand this. Make this clear, I've told you this many times, but you keep bringing in the limbs of God. Somehow you understand them as limbs. I don't understand why would you take this literally. Now, we know that Allah mentions his shin, and he mentions his hand, and he mentions his face. Do you take it literally? Like for example, if if you want to take it literally in the sense as limbs, then I don't think even the, the people who, whom you just mentioned, the Salafis, they don't say that. Do they say it? No, they don't. They said we don't know about these things, what they are, how they are with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? But you want to take it as limbs, that is going, that is your literalist reading. With regards to the bracket, yes, there are many brackets in the Bible. If you want to check it out, Go and check out your Bible. I don't think there's any Bible which doesn't have brackets to explain the context of things. So when Allah, when uh, sorry, when Allah says things like He's closer to than our aorta, you want to take that literally. The reason He doesn't respond to that is because He knows He won't be able to use the same standard that He's using with the limbs and so on. So, how much? Sorry, how much time has transpired? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't. Thirty-five really. minutes. Thirty-five minutes. Thirty-five minutes. 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Right. Now, do you remember that earlier in the debate? Hashim appealed to Muslim scholars. He appealed to Muslim scholars. I'm going to show you something now, which is that the Dawah team, of which Hashim is a stalwart, the, the, the Dawah team threw, that was a compliment, they threw the Hadiths, they threw the Tasfiyah, and they threw the scholars under the bus whenever those same sources embarrassed them. Every Christian who's seen the Dawah team do that, raise your hand. We've seen Muslims do that repeatedly. So, let me quote a Muslim scholar. Let me quote a Muslim scholar. Bayan Tabis. Bayan Tabis Al Tamir. Al Tamir. Al Tamir. So, listen to what he said. We conclude that it was by eyesight as it is the Sahih narration of, from Qutada, from Ikrama, from Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet said, I saw my God in the image of a beardless man with long curly hair in a green garden. Now watch Hashim throw that under the bus. <laughs> he will throw that under the bus. Give the reference for that. Reference, volume 7, page 290 of Bayan Talbis al Jahamiya ibn Taymiyyah. I've just given you the reference, you've seen the reference, it's right there. Anyway, I'll show you in a second. Wait, so, my point is, can I, can I just have a few more seconds? My point is, that he wants to use scholars to get himself out of a problem. Now the scholars have got him into a problem, watch him arbitrarily chuck it away. Okay, now look, there are many scholars who say a lot of things. I haven't actually looked at that, which is a, what is the source there again? This you is just click on that so you can... I'm trying to. Oh, Wait, you man. don't know how to use your phone? Uh, uh. <laughs> I'll get all right. it for you. I'll get it Stop for you, the carry on. I just want to get the reference, that's all. Before you start the discussion. Because when you talk about scholars and the references, it's very important that we get authentic. Go. Even the hadiths, we have to make sure it's authentic. Okay, the source is Bayan Talbis Al Jahmiya. <laughs> Al Jahmiya. We're not on the Al Jahmiya. Start his time. Are basically 
heretics. Now, I bet with regards to this, we conclude that it was eyesight and as it is in Sahih. Uh, sorry, we conclude that it was eyesight as it is in the Sahih narration from Qutada, from Ikrama, from Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet Sallallahu I saw my God in image of beardless man with long curly hair. Now, with regards to that, we don't know whether that's an authentic narration. We don't know what it is. We have to check it. He knows very well that we categorize, the Muslims categorize the hadiths, yes? Let alone the scholars' things. We categorize the hadith into sahih, into ta'if, weak, into fabricated. This is something to show that we only take in what is something which is verifiable, which is verified. You only take what agrees with what you're saying. Is what you're saying. No, we are saying that we take with regards to what point. is authentic, but not with regards to what is unauthentic. Okay. There are many things, many things that you find in uh, Tabri, in uh, I don't know, even Hisham, in Sham, in lots of other things which are na narrations which are unauthentic. We don't believe all of those. <laughs> now, for him to say that I'll throw the scholars under the bus, I do not throw them under the bus. All I'm saying is, look at the scholars and look at their sahih narrations look at the sahih narrations of the sorry the sahih narrations of the of the hadith and so on so with regards to anything even if it's worldly let alone whether it's to do with islam even if if some news comes to you you verify you don't just believe every everything that any tom dick and harry brings to you but even if the scholars bring you something then the other scholars they verify it i don't have information with regards to that so i will say i don't know what is the reality between that, uh, between that? But we know for sure Allah says very clearly that it's unlike inspiration. To me, <laughs> this doesn't agree with that. So we'll have to look at that. I have, when you talk about Al-Jahmiya, it's possible that Ibn Taymiyyah is talking about what those people were referring to, the, the heretics. Now, so look at it now. Yeah, sure. Look at it now. You say we'll have to wait, look at it. It's all right, bro. It's all right, bro. Are you? Can you stay out of <laughs> I don't need Bob to help. Speakers corner, man. Yeah, I know. Right, so, so did speak, I not speak, say to you that Hashim would chuck it under the bus? I did. And is that not exactly what he just did? The brother is right. They only agree with the sources that helped them at the time. And that's exactly how they treat the Bible. They only quote the verses as reliable when it suits them and then chuck the rest away when it doesn't. The problem for him is that the same hadith was also seen as authentic by Ahmed bin Hanbal and Al Tabarani. Those people are not heretics. <laughs> so your problem gets worse, Hashim. So what do we have Quote and why is it important? What? Question. Don't interrupt. What do we have and why it's important? The Quran says that you will see Allah on the last day. The Quran says Allah is in heaven. The Quran says Allah has a hand, Allah has a shin, Allah has a face. The hadith say that Allah will descend to the lowest heaven. The hadith say that you will see Allah in a shape and follow him. The hadith say that the that that Muslims will follow their Lord because they recognize a shape. How else can we conclude other than the fact that Allah does enter his creation and if he does enter his creation how can he according to islamic polemics god can't enter into creation god can't enter into the finite but it gets worse it gets even worse because i want to ask hashim is the quran the word of allah is it the word of Allah, something that is of Allah, as opposed to something separate from Allah. Okay, so now we come down to the Quran. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, this is something that Bob has brought up many times. I'm sure he's been corrected many times. But just like Jay Smith and all the other Christian apologists in the park here, yes, they bring up the same thing over and over again, regardless of how many times they've been refuted on this point. Uh, anyway, as you saw that I did not throw the scholars under the bus, regardless of what Bob has alleged. Yes, I said we verify all the details, whether it is from worldly, from Islamic perspective, or even from the worldly perspective. When any news come to you, you verify. It. Very simple as that. Yes, when he makes a claim with regards to Ibn Hanbal, I don't think you gave a reference. It'll be good if you give a reference next time. Yes, don't just make claims. Give the reference. What are you glad to be afraid of? If I don't know something, it is not wrong or that I've lost the debate when I say I don't know. Yes? 
Imam Shafi said that I don't know is something which is also part of your deen. That if you don't know, you do not speculate. You say I don't know and then you do re your research. That is the right way to do with any information that you do not have. No one here is claiming, neither myself nor Bob here, that we are infallible, nor that we are claiming that we are omniscient, all knowledgeable. Even Jesus did not claim that. He didn't know the last hour. So what we are saying is very clearly that when Allah says that this Quran, did he say that this Quran is part of me? No. However, the Quran contains the knowledge that Allah has. So it, ha it has a subset of the knowledge of Allah. That doesn't mean we worship the Quran. The word of Allah is not like the word of God in the Bible or the, the way the Christians see. In the Bible, Jesus has his own will. He speaks of his own. He's worshipped. Do you see any Muslims worshipping the Quran? No, we are not Jahil. We are not some, some people who, are, who basically do not know the difference between the Creator and which He revealed to us as His message. Time. Who worships the message? Time. We are not polytheists. Oh. Exactly. We're just changing the battery. Okay, so minutes, okay. guys, minutes. notice that he threw up a lot of red herrings. Did anyone hear me accuse Muslims of worshipping the Quran? No. no. Total fallacious false argument. He's created a straw man to say that I'm arguing one point and that's not true. I'm not. I'm simply pointing out with evidence because that's what the Muslims demand from the Quran and from the Hadiths because that's what Muslims demand that their God has entered into his creation. And I've demonstrated that multiple times. And Allah's, def not Allah's, again Hashim, Hashim's defense. He sees me as his God. Hashim's defense is this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What kind of defense is that? I can't see the time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hashim, stop interrupting. No, but I can't see the timer. Can we stop? Can we stop my time? Please control it. I said I can't see the time. You're the one who keeps calling me God all the time. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> you have my yeah. permission to carry on. Thank you. So Hashim, his essential defense, and this is the defense of all Muslims, is we don't know how Allah has a shape. We don't know how Allah descends into the lowest heaven. We don't know how we see Allah. We don't know. We just don't know. Now let me ask you this. If a Christian turned round and said, we don't know, but it is in a way befitting Yahweh's glory. Would any Muslim accept that as a defense? No, they wouldn't. But yet here is Hashim standing here for 45 minutes going, we don't know, and he wants to accept that as a legitimate defense when he would mock any Christian who used the same defense. So I will be doing that in the next hour and we'll see what Hashim has to say about it. <laughs> so let me ask you this question, Hashim. Your time is up. The work. Next time. <laughs> so look, what we don't know is very clear. That is not mentioned clearly in the Quran or in the Hadith. We don't know. We do not speculate. Yes, that is very clear. With regards to our belief, with regards to the Tawheed, as you have seen, the Tawheed does with the oneness of Allah. Bob the Builder here cannot even point a finger to that. He has not, he has not even told us anything with regards to the Tawheed and that was the topic of this discussion. This is the beauty of Islam, Alhamdulillah. The beauty of the clarification that, of, that has been given to us from the Prophet Muhammad that Allah is one. Yes, he is the one. Yes, Allah is He's eternal. Yes, he is neither, he's neither created nor is he himself, does himself create. Yes, and there is nothing like unto him. This is one chapter, only four lines, four verses. Surah Al Ikhlas, chapter 112 in the Quran, which encapsulates what the what Allah is with regards to his uh, basically a basic definition of his. Yes, with, when we are the Christians. They do tell us he's a mystery. The Trinity is a mystery, which is kind of, I don't know, Paul, sorry, Bob, yeah? Yes, well, Paul or Bob. <laughs> so what, what I'm saying is that they do say, I don't know on many things. Yes, when we ask them about the childhood of, of Jesus, how the God grew into wisdom, we don't know. This is what it is. Yes, so there are many things, please. It comes to both of us. In your religion, in my religion, it's the same. There are many things we don't know, and many things we actually know. 
The things which we know are clear in the Quran from which Bob the Builder is unable to point a single finger on the Tawheed, the very topic of this discussion as he said we are going to discuss the Tawheed. The Tawheed has got to do with oneness of Allah which is clear that's the reason he is not going to blame the Muslims for following the oneness of Allah because there's no objection to that. Alhamdulillah. Okay, the doctrine of Taweed isn't simply that God is one. It is also that God is not like his creation. That God does not enter his creation or compromise himself or his unity because such things would be shirk. However, Hashim wasn't paying attention. Hashim wasn't listening because I asked Hashim and he avoided the question so he can come back to it. Are Allah's hands the same as his shin? Are Allah's shin the same as his face? Is his face the same as his eyes? Answer that question for us. Now Hashim will say these are all metaphors and he blames me for being literalist. The Salafists are also literalist. Shamsi is a literalist. They simply go Allah does have hands, a shin, eyes, but he, we don't know how, that they're not like the creation. But Allah has a shape, people will see that shape, they will follow him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a shape, do you agree? I have hands, do you agree? I have a face, do you agree? I have eyes, do you agree? Muslims. Does Allah have eyes? Silence! <laughs> Silence! Does Allah have a face? Does Allah have a shape? Can you see me? Can you see me? Yes, you can. Will you see Allah? Yes, you will. So how is it that Allah is unlike his creation? when all the properties and qualifications are there. Perfect. The texts of Islam are inconsistent to the theology of Islam. That's absolutely false and you know that Bob. Absolutely. Okay. So anyway, if Bob say, remember, look at the way he said that. Hands, he pointed to the eyes, the face, which means he's literally trying to say these are the lips of God. They are not. I don't think any person, whether it's Salafi or non-Salafi, whether they're Ashari or Athari or Ma Maturidi, none of them say that this is the limbs of Allah. So Bob here is not only lying to you guys in your face, like he does all the time when he teaches the Christians maybe, yes, when he teaches, when he talks to Muslims, yes, that is what he's trying to portray because his God unfortunately took the form of a man. He not only took the form of a man, but he actually bled like a man, he cried like a man, he basically begged God like a man, he fell on his face like a man when he wanted something. That is what he is now worried about. So he wants to say, why do we, why are we in this situation? And the Muslims regard that Allah is someone who is transcendent, Alhamdulillah, transcendent to space and time. We know this. We know that all, we will see Allah, but this will be in the Akhirah. It's about the unknown. You cannot know. You only have information about this universe or what a fraction of the universe that you can see. You cannot even see beyond in the far distant galaxies where we don't have excuse. That alone about the Akhirah. So anyway, Bob says that this is what it is, then he, that literalists, then the Christians are also maybe literalists, or do they use context? When God says in Genesis 1-27 that he created man in his image, yes Bob, form, image, are you saying your God looks like Adam, that he was Adam with limbs, that he was that tiny, yes, and he entered, his heaven, entered into the earth, now maybe the literalists have to explain this to us, that why did God create man in his own image, yes? This, does God have a beard? Like Adam did maybe, I don't know if Adam had a beard. A but if he did, did he go to the toilet? Did he actually eat? Oh, hold on. Actually, there is someone they call Time. Like Jesus. Time. A man, not a woman. Eh? Christ. Close so, ladies statement. and gentlemen, Hashim has just sealed the argument. In his, in his last statement, he said, Allah is transcendent and does not enter into time and space. And I showed you text after text after text after text in the Quran, in the Hadith, that say exactly the opposite. That Allah does descend into the lowest heaven. That you will see him. That he is in a shape. All of that means that the transcendence of Islamic theology that they want to uphold is broken. 
It is broken, and it is broken furthermore by this. It is broken because Muslims say that this Arabic book has the words of Allah. The words of Allah. The word of Allah is one of the attributes of Allah. If I am holding the words of Allah in my hand, I am holding one of the attributes of Allah. And then he will say, no, no, no. This is just a transcription of the words of Allah. That the words of Allah are up there and this is just a paper copy, a created thing. Here's the problem. An angel takes the words of Allah from Allah and transports it to Muhammad. Is that angel created? Yes. Does he take the attribute of Allah's word and transport it into the creation? Yes. So this might, sorry. Easy bro, easy. Sorry. <laughs> this might be a transcript, but the fact of the matter is, the attribute of Allah has entered into the creation. The barrier is broken and Hashim's arguments against the incarnation are broken with okay, it. I think your time's up. Now, this is my final say yeah. in this discussion. And then we start my topic, yes? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'll get a bottle of water, but yes. That's fine, yeah. You should actually, you're very nervous. Not really, but carry on. <laughs> Throwing books around, <laughs> calling me God. All right, so anyway, what I was saying is oh, that Bob here somehow still thinks the limbs of Allah is what he knows when he, Allah refers to it as hands. I've answered the question several times. For him to say that I haven't answered, maybe you should go and look at the video because I know you're nervous, Bob. This is not an easy discussion for Christian to have. Try to use your own um, theology to understand the Quran and Islam. It's very, very wrong. You shouldn't do it. Okay? We know that the Quran is, is Kalam Allah. This is basically what Allah has given to us through the angel Jibreel. Yes. When Angel Jibreel. How did Allah give it to Angel Jibreel? Does anyone know? Has anyone researched it? Does anyone know about the unknown? How Allah has given it to him? We don't know. So imagine this. I'll give you an analogy. So Bob, if he has a secretary and Bob dictates the words to the secretary, yes, and then the secretary writes it down, are those Bob's words? Yes, they are. Yes? Then you cannot say that these are the words of the secretary. So when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, received <laughs> The message or even if angel Jibreel who's also a messenger angels angels are messengers of God as well so when the messengers of Allah receive the words of Allah does that mean those are the words of the angel or of Muhammad or of anybody else no it is not they they can actually write down the word the words or they can memorize the words of Allah it doesn't mean the words itself are a separate attribute of Allah in the sense that you're thinking yes Allah has attributes but for him to manifest those, for example, when Allah has his Rahmah, he manifests the Rahmah amongst the people, doesn't mean the people now become the attribute of Allah. Time. Have we done an hour? Yeah, I think uh, we've yeah. done an hour. Have we, I'm asking him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah, I think, good discussion, Bob. At least we shout, but we don't, yeah, not yeah, enough, yeah. not enough negative. Me and you can have a, yes. you can have a sense of the conversation. Yeah, I'll show you. No problem. Yes. Okay, so. so